quorum. I call the meeting to order. The first item is the adoption of the agenda as presented. And motion. I uh, make a motion to adopt. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, no public comment. Move on to item number three is the uh, draft minutes of the October 22nd meeting. We're looking to approve the minutes. Any comments from commissioners? Um, that was, you, you, you guys talked about the um, the rentals some more, right? Yes. Is, is Luke here or is he going to no, no, Luke is not here. He is, he is gone. We uh, discussed, they had made some internal changes in their uh, practices and policies that seem to kind of will help control or alleviate some of the issues. They're going right. to uh, stop earlier, require um, additional um, things of renters if they meet certain criteria. It seemed like yeah, I, I've read they about it. Handle on it. There so. was more of the operational changes rather than the drastic policy change, and uh, uh, they also um, moved up the time when a, right. an event has to be finished, etc. So we required the um, the person that signs the contract to be here for the duration of the party. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And there's language in there asking them to uh, right. let their guests know when it's kind of come up because of that. Uh, and then there's also something in there um, around the like, possibility of additional security. Right. And the other conditions were to trigger that. I think that's part of it as well. Yeah. I'm happy to do it if you uh, offline another day. Okay, do you want to come in, walk you through what. Yeah, what I, I read what was in the, um, the, the minutes, and it, it seems reasonable. I was curious if we think that will kind of alleviate all the things that had happened more recently in the past? Uh, we certainly hope so. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, to those points, I don't know, other than having no rentals, that there's any yeah. way to potentially yeah. alleviate everything. There's always the possibility of uh, uh, things going awry. Right. Um, but I do think that, A, you know, I, a lot of the things we put in place, I definitely think will help, and we certainly expanded reasons why you won't get your security deposit back. We expanded, uh, uh, you know, consequences and penalties of law enforcement has to be called. Uh, we've ended things earlier. Plus, we've lessened the total block of time. So, all no rental event can exceed eight hours. When we used to have these, you know, kind of 12 to 12 days. You know, it, there's too long a period of time. Uh, plus, gave ourselves options on when we can call in outside security or things of that nature, too. So, I feel good about it. I, uh, I think Luke and team did a lot of research, a lot of work, talked to a lot of the other agencies in terms of what are some of the things you're doing, what are some of the issues you're having. Um, and I really, I mean, that one issue, albeit wasn't a good issue, but it really was kind of a standalone issue in its own right, and we hadn't experienced something quite like that before. So I think that the things we put in place put much larger accountability measures on parties renting the facility. Okay. Yeah, no, that sounds reasonable. Do you need a motion to adopt the, um, the minutes? I guess that would have to come from Anne or I. Right, that's right, I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. But you can vote. No, oh, right. I'm motion to approve. I'll second. I'll call it later. Okay, um, number four, the draft minutes of the November 12th board meeting is for our review. Comment from the commission on the last board meetings. Grace, I just had a question. What were the you know, major items of discussion during that meeting? I read through the minutes, but I was wondering what were the key items for that particular meeting? I mean, this looks pretty straightforward. I don't know if I was. Yeah, I, th I, think, yeah, I think the uh, major item was the public hearing. Um, fire code. Yeah, the fire code issue. Uh, 
The PNL is pretty smooth. In, just in two senses, what is the fire code issue? Does it affect parks and rec? Um, no, not really. It's, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. It's, it's really a um, cleanup of um, the same. Nothing really changes substantially yeah. for the residents of, of Morinwood. And um, it doesn't really affect um, any construction um, permits. It's pretty much all the same. Mm -hmm. um, language has been cleaned up here and there. Okay. Um, so it was a really non-eventful. It, it looked more scary than it was, really, because uh, the chief came in with like a five-inch binder <laughs> that looked like a brick. And we got the summary of whatever, 20 pages, <laughs> which it was still scary looking and read like a major, I'm sorry, snooze fest. But it was, it was just hardcore legalese and um, so she was able to give us like the super condensed you know, answer specific questions. What does it mean for vegetation management? What does it mean for um, for permits? Mm -hmm. And there was really not that much. Mm -hmm. So or nothing at all. Thank you. You can always watch it on YouTube too. I could. <laughs> There's nothing more. We'll move along to the uh, item number five, recreation and park maintenance activity report. We had a chance to review that. It's uh, unfortunate that the power issue interrupted the art show. Uh, any questions or comments from the commission? I thought the professional development um, section was great to see. Glad to know that's happening. Yeah, I'll agree with that. And it's nice that you have a additional person to help. Yeah, we actually just got background results. Um, he should be starting on Monday. Oh. Yeah, which would be nice. He's definitely, and Luke could speak more to this, and I don't know exactly how much he put in the report, but he's certainly got some uh, uh, some good uh, kind of parks and maintenance background. I believe he worked with the state park system in another state. He's a recent uh, uh, transplant to California and the Bay Area in general, uh, but uh, the people that Luke and the team met with, uh, he certainly seemed to be the most eager about it and uh, offered the most upside. and. Uh, was happy to get on board so he we've got everything we need from him now and he'll start Monday and I'm sure nobody is happier about that than Esteban and Marco <laughs> who have uh, done a tremendous job mm -hmm. uh, all things considered with it being just the two of them plus we've brought in some part-time help um, during this transition to uh, a young man named Marcus uh, who's worked in with our pool and other things before who's actually been great to have to uh, yeah hard worker uh, he's going to school he's not interested in the job on a full-time permanent basis but he, he's been very nice to have uh, an extra set of hands a young person willing to learn and do some work and follow some direction and uh, it, it's, he's been appreciated how many candidates do you have that would be a better loop question mm -hmm. uh, not a ton but I, I i think probably at least eight to ten mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I think, you know, he sat down and interviewed uh, three to five, I think, from there, and then brought uh, a couple of them back in for a second interview, uh, and the gentleman who was hired uh, seemed to be the one who stood out amongst them all, and so we're hoping that he's somebody who can come in for the long haul and start to learn uh, what we've got going on and all of our unique little yeah. circumstances and conditions uh, throughout all of our areas, so that'll be nice. Do you remember where he's from? I don't off the top of my head, um, personally, and I apologize, but I'm sure uh, Luke will have a good uh, update on that. How did the, um, the cover and the pan handle, I saw that, that got completed, do you have any yeah. details on that? Um, there was, the job was actually done real smooth once they came in and started the work and moved quickly. Um, the planner um, on the DPW side was supposed to come by at some point this week so we can close off everything. Just She just needs to observe that everything was done and all of our temporary measures on the creek bank have been removed. Uh, and uh, I, I submitted a letter from the contractor stating that it was built according to plan and here's the final diameter of the 
of the culvert. The same group who did our work, I don't know if you guys have noticed a lot of work that's been happening down right on the off-ramp, uh, on-ramp to Marinwood, uh, where they're doing almost an identical process for drain pipes that go underneath the freeway right there. This mixes services. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're the ones who do, do this. I mean, they do a lot of work for the county, and now they're doing work for Caltrans. They do work for us. They've, uh, they seem to got the market on the government contracting and this type of work. So what they did was remarkable because otherwise we would have had to tear up the whole thing and lay in all brand new piping. So for them to come in and do this lining technique was, uh, uh, and, and uh, you know, relatively speaking, pretty affordable cost to us. So uh, the, the the trickiest part of the whole project was just going through JARPA. Um, dealing with the environmental and the regulatory agencies from Army Corps to uh, the Water Board to Fish and Wildlife to the county to everything else. So, but once we navigated that, the work itself was done smoothly. They filled back in. Uh, they even reinforced where the pipe comes out uh, with some additional riprap underneath to support the added weight of what the pipe now weighs. So uh, I, if you walk over there, you're none, you, you're, you won't even know that it's right, done. Right. Yeah, in fact, it was probably right. no. yeah. Yeah. They were. It was great that they were, they were in and out with a few trucks, yeah. right, in the course of a week, and they were polite, cleaned up fast, it was efficient, and it was done. And, and, um, the fill-in looks really good, the pea gravel walked tall right into place, like mm -hmm. a quarter inch. You know, so the whole thing just seemed really well managed, so yeah, no, kudos they, to you too, Eric. Oh, thank you. The overall management of that whole thing was really smooth and nice to see. Thank you. Yeah. It took a lot of hoops, but uh, we got it done. So. Yeah. And it was a good learning opportunity for me on some of these things, too, so I, I appreciate it. It's great timing, because here we are, it's raining, and now we don't have to worry about that. Yeah, well, and we Which passed the 30-day point has come and gone. I mean, all the material is completely cured. Uh, and I just have one more step. I believe it's with the uh, water board that I just need to send them notice that the project is been completed. Yep, yeah. and then that's it, and we can... Uh, basically, the county will close off the permits and they'll close off the JARPA application as a project done to spec. That's right. great. It's nice to see that Luke renewed his CBO. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, Luke and Marco are the two who currently have it. Um, Stephanie Moray, who is the, the rec supervisor that started last spring, uh, is studying and we plan to have her do it as well. But Luke had an opportunity to get it into this course. It's a two day course. Um, and very proudly let us know that he got 100% on his uh, wow. final exam for it. So uh, that certification lasts five years. Um, Marcos is coming due in the spring, and I believe that uh, he is looking to renew. For our park maintenance staff, there's actually a, uh, a incentive pay that comes along with it. It's either 1% or 2%, so we try to encourage them to get this. And the more people that have their CPO, the better. Absolutely. Yeah, you gotta have it. You gotta have somebody with it if you're gonna operate a public pool. Right. Has our staff completed the um, inspection of the creek? Is there any? They have done the, nothing huge. Um, you know, some some fallen dead trees that need to get cleared, but they actually said it didn't look as bad as it has uh, in other years. Uh, and they're finishing up going through all the culverts and the open spaces and just the, the hot spots that we know of that uh, making sure everything's open and draining and moving. Well, any other questions on Luke's report here that I might be able to answer for you? I'm good. Yeah, they've been doing a great job. So kudos to all of all of them getting ready for it. Like now, finally, here is the rainy season. Um, and I would also say it's not really written in here, uh, and I guess I didn't realize it, but the last time this group met was before all the power shut off. Um, they just Kudos to everybody involved, especially on the fire side, but on the rec side too. Uh, you know, a lot of people were here helping to answer questions. Uh, we managed to get our programs back up and running uh, relatively quickly before schools got back in to provide an outlet for parents, uh, especially on the after school side, to send their kids to those programs, give them a little bit of normalcy. Um, preschool got up and going as soon as we could get it going again. Uh, didn't really miss too much of a beat with things other than uh, for those couple days that Monday, Tuesday, everything was canceled and by Wednesday we had uh, 
programs going in, and then by Thursday, schools were back open again, and we were back into normal. So uh, I appreciated Robin and the after school staff's efforts to get everything going, and then reaching out to parents and letting them know that, hey, we're going to actually be open, even though uh, there's no school for us to run an after school program after, and there'll be no transportation because. 95% of those kids come via the bus, but I, I think parents were excited to drop their kids off for the afternoon and have a place uh, uh, so their kids could just get back to some level of a normal routine again. So um, I was very pleased with everybody and uh, we were able to keep things going the best we could during those 48 hours. All right. This will move to number six. Uh, Commissioner, items of interest and request for future agenda items. I might start for a minute. To, this is the Thanksgiving holiday, so I'd just like to take a minute and give thanks. I'd uh, like to thank Ann for joining our commission. You, uh, your interests and insights are appreciated, and I look forward to getting to know you in the next year. And I. One more. Think that uh, <laughs> right, and without your willingness to join, you you actually you come carrying a lot of weight because without your willingness to join, we would not be able to function. Yeah, so, so thank you, and I would like to thank John for uh, seeking a reappointment to the commission. Mm -hmm. You know your willingness to stand up to conflict and misbehavior shows <laughs> character. And your continued insights and wisdom are both inspiring and appreciated. Thanks, John. Um, the district is fortunate to have you both. And I would also like to thank Eric, Tiffany, and Luke. And I've always found the willingness to work in the public sector to be both noble and heartening. <laughs> um, thank you all for your dedication and the great jobs you do and caring for our district. Uh, your work is appreciated by people that don't even know they appreciate you throughout our neighborhood. And uh, lastly, I'd like to thank Isabella. Uh, your interest and dedication to the district is awesome and refreshing. Uh, the district is very fortunate to have people like you and the other board members who are willing to step up to the plate and guide our district forward in, with sound guidance. So I thank you, and I'm fortunate to know you all. Thank, thank you much. for sharing this function, John. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Thank you, guidance is much appreciated. Yeah. My, yeah. my pleasure. Uh, any interest for future agenda items? Yeah, I'd like to um, give uh, an update on the Ponte project. Okay. Um, so next time I could do uh, presentation with photos and kind of update on where we're at with that. In January? Yeah, I guess it would be January at this point, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Luke will come back with the uh, facility tour options that we've mm -hmm. started exploring. So that will be on our agenda. Okay. That's good that the facility tours were on my mind. We covered it. So. Anything else? I could take a minute to just kind of give folks a formal update on the project. Mm -hmm. As long as it's only a minute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a little ahead of schedule. Um, um, so it's going it's going great. Um, I don't know if anybody, has anybody been up to the site? No. I tried to get you up there once and it didn't happen. No, um, I have not been where they're doing a lot of the work yet. No, yeah. I want to. Has, has anybody heard anybody that's been up to the site? I, I get photos from neighbors and whatnot, people that kind of thing. All the way up Queenstone? It's not, it, well, you could go up Queenstone, across yeah. Chicken Shack, and then down Ponte, or you could go up Ponte. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a hike, though, It's because the work is further up on the ridge, disconnected from the lower section. Um, but it's phenomenal. I mean, it's really like, I don't, I don't think Marin has a trail comparable to it. I mean, it's, it, we put an incredible amount of work and uh, effort into this project. All summer long, we had four crews on it. Um, we had like literally hundreds of tons of boulders up there. So we're building the trail on rock. 
it's like an old Roman road or something. I mean, it's just the amount of work going into it. This trail is going to last 500 years, so it's, it's pretty amazing. And a lot of the community doesn't quite realize it yet, like what's going on up there, but some do. And the ones that do are just like, wow, I can't believe what you guys are doing up there. And um, so it's it's super exciting. We we've got we got more work done than we thought we would this year, so that's great. Um, we anticipate probably building all next year and then having it open at the end of next year. So that would be ideal. Um, it just depends how the weather goes and staffing capacity and whatnot. But it's a priority project. We're putting pretty much everything everything we have at that, we, we really want to get it done as soon as possible. So. Are they going to be a, a, a maybe you can explain this more time, but is there a hiatus kind of during the, once the rains get started that they just can't really do too much until it starts to dry up again? Yeah, but we actually, when we did the environmental review for this project, we typically don't do um, mitigated negative declarations. We did that for this so we, it gives us the opportunity to work year round. Mm -hmm. if, if the weather cooperates, like if we get the storm and then it dries up for sure. six weeks, we're gonna do some work. Right. Um, typically we don't, typically we just shut down for the winter. So we're gonna wait and see how it goes. Um, it's what's called a SWIP. Do you guys, do you know what SWIP is? A storm water prevention plan. Mm -hmm. So it's a special, uh, it's a very specific, erosion control plan that has to be monitored and documented and um, so we're doing that now, especially now with the rain. Um, but that gives us the latitude to work year round. So we, we may work this winter too. Right. Now we've, we've had a few people, in fact even just earlier this week or maybe late last week, it's hard for me to remember sometimes, but uh, a person who came by and said that they were up there, <coughs> I think it was yesterday, because they said they were up there during the uh, weekend and noticed all this and just was kind of curious what the big plan was and uh, eventually we you know, explained it the best we could, but pointed them towards the direction of the web page that uh, is on the county parks site. Uh, so you might get some interest and I'll certainly, uh, you know, depending on where we're at for next month, uh, could blast something out to the community saying, hey, if you'd like a more detailed update on uh, progress with the Pawnee Bridge Trail and everything else, please attend the meeting and everything. Yeah, and, and you can always link them to our county website mm -hmm. where we kind of keep that updated. Um, we have one volunteer um, work day up there. Jeez, now I don't remember the date. I think it was the first week of October. Um, we're having another one, I think December 2nd. I can, I can get that date for you. And then the third one in February. So we're going to have lots of volunteer events. We want to get um, the community up there. We're kind of working on it and seeing the project. We're gonna have t-shirts made up and it's cool. kind of a big deal. Um, we, um, I have, I think I started by bringing, geez, I'm not sure, where, I think it was Katie Rice, the first supervisor, but n now all the supervisors are interested in going up there and seeing it. So I've been taking them up there and kind of touring them and showing the site, the project. Um, they're super interested and into it and are excited about it. So it's, it's a, it's, a, the biggest project we have right now, um, and it's Good. kind of getting a lot of attention. So, wow. Good. You, you've done a great job with it, John. So, congratulations. Well, I'm just grateful that it's here in our community. You yeah. know, that's that's kind of the beauty of it for right. for us. Right. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to get this trail that's um, a very thought, well thought out, designed. Um, tons of resources and effort put on this, and it's not going to cost our CSD anything so it's and it's a win for the county too because um, that's what the county does is provide recreation mm -hmm. for um, this, these types of opportunities so yeah. it's, it's a good incredible pick. though that you know with the trail you're working on the trail you just take it for granted you just use it and don't give it much thought but there is just uh, having you introduce us to the process and how the fact that there are so many resources that go mm -hmm. into a seemingly simple thing like a trail, you know, it's just so much research and professionals, uh, and and it's it's quite interesting and incredible. I, yeah, I mean, it's the the amount of um, technical expertise yeah. from our staff to to design and build this is 
amazing. They, you know, I think I mentioned before, they, they're career people with the county. Um, they know whatever they build, they're going to have to maintain, so they want to do it right. Mm. Um, so they're building it to last. They really don't want to have to go re rebuild this five, ten years down the road. Yeah. So it's it's a really um, thoughtful mm. design. So yeah. Yeah. I look forward to an interesting presentation. Yeah, yeah, It'll be great. Uh, anything else for the agenda? Okay. Well, there should be two interesting presentations. January. So that'll be good. Well, if there's nothing else, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, two minutes. Thirty minutes. They should have been out there earlier. Sorry, that's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs>